All right, let's pick up where we left off on Thursday. This takes us to our next type of solving equations. This is the quadratic formula. With the quadratic formula, I can solve this. Let me rewrite out our standard form of a quadratic equation. This is ax squared plus bx plus c. So I'm going to take my coefficient in front of the x, the b. It's negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. It's just another way of helping us find the roots. Now, the nice thing about this one is it can be done at any time. Um, every single question can be solved this way if it's quadratic. So let's use the quadratic formula to solve this. The first thing I have to do is get everything on the same side. So that's x squared plus 8x plus 3 equals 0. Now I actually use the formula. x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Here my a is 1, my b is 8, and my c is 3. Nothing in front of the x squared, so it's 1. b is 8, c is 3. Now I'm just plugging these values in everywhere I see their letter. Negative 8 plus or minus the square root of 8 squared minus 4 times 1 times 3 all over 2 times 1. I'm going to start solving this. Negative 8 plus or minus 64 minus 12. 8 squared is 64, 4 times 1 times 3 is 12, all over 2. Gives me negative 8 plus or minus the square root of 52 over 2. Now I can break this 52 over, or the square root of 52 down. In order to do that, I realize that's just 4 times 13. I can take the square root of 4, which is 2. So it's 2 times the square root of 13. There is no square root of 13, so I leave it. Negative 8 plus or minus 2 root 13 over 2. I can divide the negative 8 by 2 and the 2 by 2. That gives me negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 13. That's it. Now, this piece here, let's go back. This piece here that's under the root is called the discriminant. Discriminant can help me to determine uh, how many answers I'm going to get. So if I'm just looking at what's under the square root, the b squared minus 4ac, whenever I plug those numbers in for b squared and a and c, if, those not, if that solution, b squared minus 4ac, is greater than 0, that means that there's going to be two distinct real solutions. So if I ask you for how many solutions, you don't have to solve the whole thing. You just plug that into the discriminant and tell me how many there are. If it's equal to zero, then there's only one distinct real solution. And if it's less than zero, then there are no real solutions. And so looking at the discriminant first will tell you immediately whether or not you're going to have come up with an answer. 
in some cases there will be no real solutions. Let's look at this one. I have 2x squared, and that's equal to negative x minus 3. So first I have to get everything on the same side. 2x squared plus x plus 3 equals 0. Now before I start, if I look at my b squared, which is 1, my c, which is 3, and my a, which is 2, and I plug those into the b squared minus 4ac. That's going to be 1 squared minus 4 times 2 times 3. 1 squared is just 1. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 times 3 is 24. 1 minus 24 gives me negative 23. Negative 23 is less than 0. So I know that there are no real solutions. I don't have to solve the rest of the problem. I don't have to put it into the quadratic formula. I'm already done because my discriminant tells me that there are no real solutions for this question. Let's pull some examples out here. This is kind of a review for the whole section. Mm. Let's pull uh, number four. X squared plus X equals 20. First thing we need to do is get this 20 over to the other side. This is X squared plus X minus 20 equals 0. Now I have to factor, because that's what it tells me to do in the question. So what multiplies to give me negative 20 and adds to 1? This is just an x squared. tells me this is x and x. 5 times 4 will give me 20. Because this is a negative and this is a positive. I know one of these is a positive and one of these is a negative. The bigger number goes with the positive because this remained positive. So it's x plus 5 times x minus 4. Break those up. Gives me x equals negative 5 x equals 4. And I'm done. Let's try a harder one of those. Say number... We'll go number 12. First thing I'm going to do is get everything on the same side. Now I have to figure out what factors to give me 18. Some factors of 18 would be 3 and 6, 9 and 2. What multiplies to give me negative 6? I would say 3 and 2. Possibly 1 and 6. So if I'm looking at this and I do 3 times 2, that gives me 6. 6 times 3 will give me 18. Since this is a negative and this is a negative, that tells me that I'm going to have two separate signs in here. So 18 minus 6 is not going to give me negative 23. So that's not going to work out well. I could then look at my next pairing. 9 times 3 is 27. 2 times 2 is 4. 27 minus 4 gives me 
23. This needs to be a negative, so I'm going to do 9x, 2x. That comes from this first pair. Then I'm going to have to flip my signs here. And make this plus and this minus, because 9 times 3 gave me the 27. Now 9 times 3, that's negative 3 is going to give me negative 27. Plus 4x gives me negative 23. 9x plus 2 equals 0. 2x minus 3 equals 0. Subtract 2 over. 9x equals negative 2. Divide by 9, negative 2 ninths. Over here I add to 3. And divide by 2. So that's it for number 12. These ones were the easier ones. That's where we take the square root of both sides. Now you can pick out any random one, like number 14. X squared equals 12. Just take the square root of both sides. It gives me X equals plus or minus. And then square root of 12, we can break that down to 4 and 3. Because 4 is a perfect square. Square root of 4 is 2. And then the 3 stays inside because there's no perfect root. And I'm done. Plus or minus 2 root 3. That would be your exact solution. Approximate solutions, I would just plug that into my calculator now. 2 root 3, that's going to be 3.46 and negative 3.46. Okay, let's jump down to 26 and complete the square. I have x squared minus 4x minus 30 equals 0. First thing I do is get this over to the other side. x squared minus 4x equals 30. Then it's negative b over 2a. Or just negative b over 2. So it's negative of a negative 4. That's over 2, and then we square it. So that gives us 4. So on the left now, that's x minus 2, because that's what I had got inside here. I'm going to do wrong there. That oh, should just be a negative. Sorry. It should be a negative 4 over 2 squared. That's better. So it should be x minus 2 squared. And then on the right side, I get equals 34. <laughs> Take the square root of both sides. 34 is 17 times 2. That doesn't break down anymore. So I get x minus 2 equals, that cancels the square out, plus or minus the square root of 34. Then add my 2 over, x equals 2 plus or minus the square root of 34.
All right, the last type of question is using the quadratic formula, which is what we did today. So now I'm just going to give you some homework on that. 